you were involved? Uh, I was, in the as I told you about my story with the foreign minister, he was the foreign minister who signed the ASEAN declaration, Mr. Ramos. Mm -hmm. He's the father of Fidel Ramos, the president. And that's why I carry on this generation relationship. And I was social and appointment secretary, and all these meetings he had to attend. And I said, oh, all these horrible meetings, you know. Mr. Secretary, you know, the first effort we made, the Association of Southeast Asia, it failed. The second one failed. What makes you so sure that this one will not fail? He said, young lady, this one will survive because it is ours, meaning belongs, it's our idea. It's not from somewhere else. You know, we had the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, which included uh, the superpowers at the time. And in many ways, we were pawns in this Cold War situation. But the five men who got together were evolving countries that had bilateral issues. Mm -hmm. We had issues with Malaysia, uh, Singapore and, and Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand. Malaysia and, and uh, Singapore too, because yep. you were just coming out. I said, he said, believe me, this will survive. We have talked a lot, we have met a lot. We are one in thinking that we should band together. It was a boys club. It too, well, because at leaders at that time, yep. they were all men. Mm -hmm. There were no women and, and they came out happy. I said, oh my gosh, you know, what will happen now to this Mm. young ASEAN grouping and and again when I heard about the Bangkok uh, uh, meeting they were so relaxed with each other mm. and I had a sense that the foreign ministers of ASEAN had played a very big role in getting ASEAN on its feet why they knew the the the, the region very well the leaders knew their respective countries. They have to cater to domestic issues. Yep. So, uh, of course, people tell me, oh, yes, but they couldn't have decided on their own. They would, of course not. You have to decide with your heads of state. But I believe that the relationship between and among these five men, oh, if I tell you all the stories that my foreign minister told me about this meeting, Wonderful. They were thinking, Share some. <laughs> thinking together, very much alike. Thailand started, drafted the Bangkok Declaration, and I heard from uh, uh, Sabam Gyan, one of the uh, 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 publishers, I think, or editors of uh, Jakarta Post, when I saw him recently. Well, he has died, unfortunately. He said, you know, Talia, you're celebrating 50 years of ASEAN. Let's get all these wonderful stories together. And <laughs> then he said, you know what Adam Malik said when I interviewed him? He says, you know, my good friend Narcisa Ramos from the Philippines, he was wonderful with his words. Like he, he is a lawyer, like many Filipinos are lawyers, very legalistic minded. And he was a journalist too. I said, oh, I think it's because you're a journalist that you like him. <laughs> he says, no, no, no. Adam Malik told me that we saw the, the draft done by Thailand. It was prepared by the Foreign Ministry of Thailand. And we all said, oh, this needs a little editing here, here and there. And he said, oh, give it to Narciso. He's the journalist and he's the legal mind. So things like this, nobody writes about. Yeah. So I told um, Sabam, write about it. So I have a basis to talk about it. Unfortunately, he died. Mm. But I said, because I heard that directly from him, I said, I'm going to put it down because people forget. So this is how they were working. And so I, I said to myself, oh, he really believed in it. And as time went on, I was posted after that to uh, Geneva. Mm. And there was this study made by the UN that it's time for this wonderful five countries to think about a common market. And we were charged in Geneva to work at it, to have a look at it. And we worked so well together. I was discovering how we were thinking similarly, how we were desiring, perhaps it was leadership from the foreign ministry saying, 
look you guys work on this see what we can do to make ASEAN even closer to each other uh, of course one should not miss the point that we banded together because of outside fear that we would be swallowed up by so players. alone you may be swallowed up right yeah <laughs> but and and then this is what pushed us together even closer sure. but from within we had a feeling that hey we have to get together and that was the early days of ASEAN and uh, we were the young we were we were the diplomatic underdogs we were the young kids who were do all the running around and the ambassadors would call an ASEAN group meeting but we didn't even know each other's names and we should help each other and this evolved through the years of my career that especially in the Philippines where there was a time when we had martial law and the world was against this us there was ASEAN that kept us in the radar screen all the time because we were part of a bigger grouping than ourselves and, and food I tell you it's a uniting factor we all like to eat rice can you imagine uh. traveling around and eating potatoes only? I tell you, you will, you, an ASEAN will run amok if you only feed him <laughs> potatoes. But if you feed him rice, we all end up in a Chinese restaurant because there's rice. To me, that's very significant. It, when you see the, the rice stalks that are put together mm -hmm. in a sheaf, mm -hmm. there was a time when somebody wanted to change it. I won't tell you who. But I went through That's it. That's the ASEAN logo. The ASEAN logo. So anyway, uh, through the years, I realized how important it is to be part of a group. I mean, we are small countries compared to the superpowers. And to gain a voice and to really have an impact, I think more is power. A lot of people are cynical, you know, skeptical, even up to today, right? Oh, After yes. 50 oh, yes. years, you know, we've come yeah. a long way. Yeah. People still say it's toothless, isn't quite doing what it's supposed to do. You were it, a cynic yourself yeah, when you, you first know, started. Because we, we have different expectations. What I believe is the biggest contribution of ASEAN is the peace dividend. Mm. If you recall how we were all having our border issues, etc. To me, ASEAN provided that I always call it the public space where we could talk to each other. There's always, in any ASEAN meeting, there's always a bilateral to so try to, I always have a checklist and say, what am I going to talk to uh, Thailand about? There's this problem of this and that. And what is this thing with, with Malaysia or with Singapore? I, th then it gives us an opportunity to, to dialogue and, and, and to talk and instead of making public pronouncements that in the mm. end you might not be happy with or be not be addressing the issues. I, I think this is the greatest contribution that ASEAN should be uh, given recognition for. And credit for. Really. And credit for. I mean, we all had border problems. Mm. There's still the South China Sea problem. And ASEAN is not all about the South China Sea. It's beyond that. It's more than that. It's the old the problems that we were able to address and keep the peace so that we can go about developing our economies, educating our people, making sure health. I mean, SARS, we all jump to help each other. Mm. I think this is such a neighborly gesture, not gesture, but a meaningful thing to do. When, when I saw SARS, uh, the, the SARS uh, issue really made us all come together, come and, together and, and, and address it. And I said, perhaps it would be too much to say if I, I said that if ASEAN was not there, we would have to invent it because today you, you need each other, you need your neighbors, you need your your immediate environment, your community to, to be with you in common issues that confront you on a day-to-day -day basis. And that public space that gives us, people tell me, 
oh, there's so many meetings every year, 300, <laughs> 600. I said, you know, it's like weaving a tapestry. The more you weave, the stronger the tapestry becomes. But you must have a good design. Mm. And I think we're coming to a point for the next 50 years of ASEAN to the next design, which I said, 50 years we maintain and kept that peace. I think now we're talking to each other, we're playing with each other, etc. Now I said, the challenge in the next is the generation to make the next, the, the next 50 years a, a meaningful experience for everyone, not just those sitting in the conferences, mm -hmm. not just those uh, political elite or the economic elite. It should go further down. And so that to me is a challenge for the next 50 years. It's true. A lot of times ASEAN right now as an organization is dealt with at a political level, That's political true. leaders yes, only. Yes. Um, the popular people in general do not see it happening. You, you, when issues arise, you, know, yeah, you, you, yeah. you point a finger, it's not doing anything, ASEAN's not doing anything. How then do you think you, know, you could make it more inclusive or make it trickle down? I remember when I uh, got home and I saw all these ratings, who among the ASEAN countries are familiar about ASEAN? The low level of awareness of the Philippines woke me up and I said, oh dear, I've got to do something. So I went around and made a list of all the people I know who are familiar with ASEAN, talked to them and I said, how come this survey shows that our people are not familiar with ASEAN? And everybody said, yeah, perhaps we were not delivering the message, we were not cascading the message. It stayed with us. So I said, what do we do about it? Well, we're still around, let's share. And so this gave birth to the ASEAN Society of the Philippines, oh. which we just registered. And I said, this again is mentoring the next generation, what had happened and what they could do in the future in terms mm. of all these possibilities that's opened in ASEAN, all these groupings that interface and interact. But the problem is there has to be relevance to the bigger picture that we wanted to create from the very beginning. We said we wanted peace, stability, prosperity. I think peace, we have more or less gone there. We are stable so that economies can flourish and to many it is flourishing. Growth rates are Wonderful. I mean, we are the envy of many regions that I know. I've, I've dealt with South America, I've dealt with Africa, uh, with all our dialogues. And I said, hey, we're, do, we're not doing badly. Hmm. But that message has to come down to every individual that belongs to the community. And I remember uh, I was uh, meeting President Ramos to ask him to be the chair of hmm. the ASEAN Society. And we had a long chat and he said, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, because I believe in it. I'm the second generation that believes in it. I said, yeah, soon it will be third, fourth, fifth, and you must be able to keep the generational uh, consciousness. And this year, 50th anniversary and Philippines being the chair. I know, and, and, and I, one of the things I'm going to talk to is to keep that momentum. We have so many commemorative activities, mm -hmm. although there could have been more. I'm, I'm not, never satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> there could have been more, you know. And I said, for example, invite all the former uh, foreign ministers, all the former people who can talk about how it was before and how they saw it grow. So I'm going to suggest to King Young, you're going to be the next chair. 51st, yep. that's where you have to innovate new ways to address how to get ASEAN be an everyday experience in everybody's lives in this region. I said, 50th anniversary is commemorative, you know, but the, the 51st is moving forward. 
51st is moving forward. You have a task. You're always ticking, isn't it? Up yeah. there. <laughs> uh, and, and in this meeting uh, in Manila of ASLI, this Asia Institute for Leadership and uh, Institute for Leadership. Strategy and Leadership. This is ASLI of, of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And it was organized by the son of Mahathir, I think. And, but it's been doing very well. This is the 14th meeting of ASEAN Forum. Uh, meet the public meeting the leaders, which I think is very good because it, it attracted people who otherwise will not be part of the official mm. meetings. And I talked to him about ASEAN society and he said, I'm going to form one in Malaysia. It's going to be ASEAN society in Malaysia. It's CSOs, NGOs, it's uh, educators, it's media. I said, media needs a lot of education here mm. because they are hijacked by, by issues, controver controversial, controversial issues. issues. There has to be a narrative of ASEAN that's weaving through yep. our lives. Thailand has not done a fantastic job. They have anything that comes out of ASEAN is translated into Thai mm. and it's distributed everywhere. Amazing. And I said, Philippines, you don't have to translate. It's all in English and people can understand. Mm. But Thailand, uh, I think it's also because from the beginning, Thailand was very keen. That's why you have the Bangkok Declaration. It mm. was Tanat Koman who invited these foreign ministers. He saw that the first two efforts were, were failing because it had a limited participation. ASA is uh, Philippines, uh, Malaysia, and Thailand. Mafilindo is Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. Mm. So All they very, were very small. Yeah. So when Thailand came in to invite these five foreign ministers, mm. he had a bigger picture. Mm. And of course, somebody said they, they were also scared because communism was going to come in from here and also from China, from, from the Cultural Revolution. I said, whatever the reason is, they did something about it. Yeah. Not just say, well, I'm going to fight this out myself. So all of that, all of these stories should be kept alive. In because, collective memory. Yes, right? collective memory is very important. Yeah. To, to see through, to convince people that it's good for everyone, that takes a lot of effort. And, the AEC, that's something that's in the media a lot more. What, what's your take on the AEC? Well, uh, you know, when something will affect your pocket, yep. you are more reserved. Yeah? Uh, for example, in, 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 in the Philippines, we, we were not very enthusiastic because we were not competitive enough. I mean, we had to admit it. Uh, we are not competitive in terms of uh, the financial system. Uh, uh, someone said, you know, these big banks of, of Singapore and Thailand will eat us alive. So there is this reservation. Yeah. Unless you sort of get those people together and say, hey, how can we help you grow? How? But as I said, when it, it affects your pocket, you are more reserved. But there are other things in the AEC, like making uh, business transactions easier, simpler. I mean, there are many things that can be done. Uh, of course, again, the mobility of people. There are some people who r resent it, but some who, who think that this will link the people of ASEAN better. Uh, so mobility of, of uh, labor, mobility of people, mobility of capital, uh, open trade. Uh, I, I think the facility to, to trade is the easiest thing to do when you simplify at, at rules. At least you, you make at things least. small steps that you could... Yes, mm. and, and it's taking root. It has taken root and, and I said, you, you complain about it, but today you can buy Vietnamese things Easily, you can buy some Thai food easily. We don't see it, right? People yeah. forget. Yeah, that. and this is where I think that information sharing, etc., is very important. The media has to be 
better acquainted with what's going on. I mean, if I make it so simple like, hey, how many Vietnamese things do you have with you now? You didn't have that before. How many Thai things and how many Filipinos are in, in Singapore? You know, those are the people like to see visible uh, manifestations huh. of what this uh, community is about. And it takes a while. But also, again, as I said, this is not cascading down to people. You, you talked about next year, the 51st year of ASEAN, you know, yeah, being it's transformational Singapore. and moving forward. One of the, the issues that, that has always arise is this consensus-based approach to ASEAN's decision-making. Should it move towards, say, majority rather than uh, consensus-based? I, I brought you a magazine where I wrote about <laughs> consensus. I, I said, I, I still believe that it is what kept ASEAN strong. Mm. Uh, consultation and consensus. Because of our past, we really didn't know each other. We, we knew more about the U.S. than we did about Myanmar or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Indonesia must have known more about other countries like uh, Holland or something. And, and uh, Vietnamese uh, ate only French, French bread. And, yep. You know, so we are coming from that. And so we, we really had to discover each other. And that took some time. And this is why consensus building uh, through all of these consultations, everybody thinks ASEAN, oh, it's a, a talk shop. I said, yeah, but you've got to talk to each other. You've got to know what's going on in other people's minds. Perhaps after 50 years, ASEAN is mature enough to go beyond consensus. But it would need a lot of changes in procedures. Uh, in the AEC, what we had looked into before was 10 minus X. 10 minus X. You don't know. Perhaps two or three is not in favor. But if the bigger majority would yes. agree, then it should be accepted. But this has to be accepted by all. By all. Yeah. But you don't have to be in favor, and, but you don't have to stop it. Yep. Okay. But you can say, sorry, I'm not with you, but go ahead. Agree to disagree then. Yeah, agree to disagree and, and, and hold back. And so I said, consensus building is still very important. But you have to do now some thinking in terms of, say, majority vote. Why not? It's, it's democratic. We are still democratic, hopefully. Uh, this uh, 10 minus x, uh, then perhaps procedures might have to be changed. Yeah. Perhaps some institutional changes will have to be undertaken. What can be classified to be to be considered 100% uh, or what can be considered 10 minus X mm. or majority vote. But you have to agree that this can carry necessary. the day. Mm. So we don't get stuck like in Cambodia where one didn't want a statement and there was no statement. I mean, mm. that to me was really a test of, of the, the institutional framework that why did we allow this thing to happen? when everybody is supposed to be for it and one was not. You know, uh, is it the tyranny of the objector? If you have one message, this being ASEAN 50, you have one message on ASEAN, what would it be? What would you want to say? Well, I, I suppose I said it in, in what I drafted. Uh, we should celebrate ASEAN success, but we should confront the challenges. And I think there's still a lot of challenges. And this means working harder than we, we did. And of course, engaging the public is very important. Engaging the citizens of ASEAN. I'm very careful to say ASEAN citizen because there's no such thing. Where there's no supranational. Yep. Uh, there's no ASEAN passport. There's no, although we have a no visa, th those are, those are incremental, and I think the, the, the fact that uh, one of the things I insisted when I got home one day, I said, 
hey, everybody has an ASEAN lane. Let's make ASEAN people feel that they are welcomed in this ASEAN lane. I know because we initiated the APEC card, hmm. the APEC business card, which facilitates travel. Yeah. And if you want mobility, don't, don't make people feel frustrated at the airport. Make them feel welcome from, from day one, from the moment they enter the, 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 the gates. And, and these are small manifestations, but it, it and, and I said, perhaps you should have an ASEAN card. You know, I belong to ASEAN. Here it is. And this is what made the Europeans feel. I have a European passport. But I know that it will be difficult for ASEAN to come to a common currency, to a common passport, to a supranational. Uh, in the first place, we, you have maritime Philippines, maritime uh, Indonesia, you have continental Thailand. You know, all those differences Difference. come into play. Yeah. And, and uh, last week, uh, we inaugurated a direct link between Mindanao and uh, uh, Minado, uh, you know, in, to, to give a physical link. You know, you need also these physical manifestations. Yeah. So small steps, incremental. Incremental, yes. That's, that's a key word, and, isn't and, it? And you don't, you don't push, because when you push, you get resistance. resistance. But uh, we still have a, but a challenge, and I'm going to challenge uh, Singapore. You will inaugurate the next phase of ASEAN history. Yeah. <laughs> he says, oh, you're passing your back. I said, no, we are celebration. You're yes. consolidating, yes. and then you move on. Yes, yes, <laughs> and we're celebrating ASEAN, you know. It's, thank God we're here and maintain that peace that has given us all the possibilities to do what we have done this past 50 years. Yeah. We are a voice in the UN. When we put up a candidate for a position, we get an ASEAN position. It's very important. What do your ASEAN colleagues say? Let's support this guy. There's already 10. And we, we, you get results. Mm. And when, when superpowers ask, uh, are you 10 of you in this? Yes, of course, we are united in this. It makes a difference. Instead of saying I or we the voice of do. one. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the, the voice of ten credible countries is very important. And also it, it, it behooves the leadership in each country to be able to also think in terms of the region, which I know is, is tough. But we have to start balancing that national interest. And I was uh, struck by a word of President Ramos. It was not in my draft because I was saying, oh, I didn't say that. And, and he said, my sister, Senator Shahani, whom I cited as a role model, speaks of independent foreign policy. And he said, I disagree with her. I said, oh. I said, I believe in interdependent foreign policy, which goes beyond one, because we should really start thinking of a collective thought, what is good for all of us, which I thought was you know, one step 